All right, so today I asked the girls, what's a Filipino dish you really want to eat that I haven't cooked in a while? Surprisingly, they said chicken adobo. And the reason that's surprising is because I've never made them chicken adobo. I think I've made chicken adobo once or twice a long time ago. I prefer pork adobo, but today I'll be making chicken adobo. So I'm going to be making it with a whole chicken. If you've ever made adobo, you already know the ingredients are very basic. Lots and lots of garlic, vinegar, and soy sauce, and I think that's it. Naturally, you've got your salt, you've got your pepper, and you can add a little bit of sugar. Just depends on your taste. I might throw in an onion, but th that's the basic ingredients. I'm gonna be marinating the chicken, so what I'm gonna do first is actually crush the garlic in my mocojete just to get it crushed up and nice and oily and into little bits and pieces. Then I will break down my chicken. I was surprised the girls mentioned they wanted chicken adobo because I've never made it for them. But most likely, mama's made it for them. And one of the reasons I didn't make it is because I do prefer pork over chicken. And also mama made it often enough where I would just eat it at her house. So obviously now it's up to us to keep the tradition going. I'm following a Filipino cook's recipe. His name is Panlasang Pinoy. That's the name of his channel. He has an amazing chicken recipe for adobo. If you want to learn the authentic ways, you better learn from a Filipino. Shout out to you. I'm using your chicken adobo recipe. What I thought was interesting is the fact that he was using a whole chicken because that's not very common in the States. I've been using it more and more though because of cost and also there's a lot in a whole chicken that you don't get when you get just the bits and pieces. Garlic is ready. I'm using the mocajete because the guy in the video had a mortar and pestle and I thought, why not? One thing about smashing garlic, you see all those oils? That's what you're trying to get. I think that's about the consistency I'm looking for. All right, time to prepare the chicken. I've been loving using the whole chicken, of course, to make soup stocks, but even when I just make any kind of chicken dish, I both want to get better at deconstructing a chicken or breaking it down. And it is the most cost effective way to eat chicken because it's gonna be the best price. There is a third reason why I use a whole chicken. Oh, by the way, this is part of it. See all this stuff that comes with it? These are the innards, very healthy for you and you don't get it when you just buy straight up chicken thighs. All the connector tissue, the cartilage, the bones, the rib meat, even this guy right here, all flavor that you don't get when you just buy individual cuts. So this is why I've been using a whole chicken. It, the easiest way to get all that into your food is through a chicken broth, like a, a legit chicken bone broth. When you cook it like this, and, and the first time I've ever seen this done was on this guy's video, which by the way, I'll link that up. I thought it was just interesting because it makes sense not only from a cost perspective, but flavor and health perspective as well. I literally don't know what I'm doing right now. Um, usually I watch a video, but I don't have time. So I'm just kind of breaking it down, taking the leg off first. I might break that down further, but I'll put that off to the side. Chicken adobo. Oh, really? Yes. Are you I to get this? Yes, I did. Because you asked for that, so I wanted to make it. Actually, I wanted to make adobo. I just wanted to see if you guys would say it. That's why I thought it was interesting that you guys both asked for chicken adobo too, specifically. All right, I deconstructed the chicken now. I didn't do a great job. I just kind of went for it. I'm going to add the garlic pieces. And I only did one because I'm running low on time. So I'm just going to go for it with this one. I'm doing about two tablespoons of soy sauce per pound of chicken. This is four, so I'm gonna go for it. Now, this is one part that I believe is really important to measure because you can easily use too much soy sauce. I've done that in the past, so it's better to measure. In fact, I'm gonna go for six. I think that's four. Reason is you can always add more soy sauce and all I'm doing here is marinating this chicken. That's all I'm trying to do with this. There you go. I have to be really careful because there are some bones. When you deconstruct a chicken and you don't know what you're doing, there's some sharp bones. So I'm just going to mix this all by hand, obviously. I'll do it very gently. I'm just massaging the soy sauce in there. On the guy's video, he mentions to don't add the vinegar till later. And I, I think I know why. 
one of the things I learned from mama was not stir your pot after you add the vinegar. So that would make sense not to add it right now in this process. I'm gonna go ahead and cover this with plastic wrap, put it into the fridge and let it marinate for the next three hours. And then I'll get to cooking this a little bit later. Four hours later, I know I said three hours, but I had to go to gym. So it's been sitting a little bit longer. I was gonna use a second chicken, but I didn't get to it. So I've got this leftover chicken thighs, which will go perfectly and will be the perfect amount for our family. I've got all the other ingredients ready to go. So for the seasoning, whole black pepper, bay leaves, got some salt, some water, some chicken stock, which is not in the actual recipe, but just thought, why not? That's gonna have uh, a lot more body to it. And then suka, which is just vinegar. This is a cane sugar vinegar, the style of vinegar that's from Philippines. And then I'm gonna go ahead and chop this onion next. So in most Filipino adobo videos, they're using a wok, which I've got a wok down there, but because I'm doing so much volume, I just prefer using a pot. And that's what I remember mama using. Um, I've got my lid going and I've got the heat on high. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. I'm using some beef tallow for my oil today. And this is just leftovers from my last deep fry. I'm gonna sear this chicken in batches right now so that I don't overcrowd the pan. And then I will start cooking up the rest. So I have seared the outside and my goal isn't to cook it all the way through because that's gonna happen when I add all the liquids and boil and simmer this. So I'm just taking this out now. Got a nice golden brown caramelization going, especially on the skin. Even this bone right here, I'm gonna put this in because there's a lot of goodness on that. One thing to be conscious of, you don't wanna burn anything. So if there's any bits and pieces in there that you can remove, like uh, garlic, I would. Now I'm gonna add the rest of my pieces now to this. I am just gonna add these pieces, even if it's not touching the full surface, that's okay because this one's, this part's not gonna cook as much. As I mentioned, I'm not trying to cook this all the way through. I'm just trying to get a nice sear on the outside. All right, it's got a nice sear on this batch. First thing I'm gonna do is just add the onions. I'm not even worried about breaking them apart. I will just kind of get them going here. I know that onions aren't in a lot of adobos, but I like adding the onions just because it's nice having it in there. And also there is a little bit of sweetness that comes out of those. Then I'm gonna take some of my water here. I'm just gonna put it into this bowl. This is the bowl that the chicken was marinating in. I swish it around. And then this is what I'm gonna use to deglaze it. I've got the heat on super high now. And then I'm gonna add all of that. That's also gonna capture all the garlic pieces and garlic flavor. Goal here is to scrape off all the bits and pieces and the fatty pieces that have stuck to the bottom of the pot and get it into that liquid. At this point, I am going to add the rest of my pieces. Just dunk them right in. Get as much of that goodness out of the plate. Add my chicken stock now. This is the part of the cooking process that's gonna cook the chicken all the way through. Another thing I'm gonna do is add some of these bay leaves. I was told that fresh is way better. I've rarely ever seen anybody use fresh ones. So I'm just gonna use about three or four. Goal here is to get the liquid up to a boil, and then after that, reduce it, cover it, and let it cook for about 30 minutes. Totally forgot, I'm gonna add the black pepper. Always better to add less, gonna add more later. I am gonna crack a little bit in there too. Stir a little bit, not too much. Try to get everything down in the sauce. Gonna turn down the heat, just a simmer, so medium low. Cover it, and let this cook for about 25 minutes. Adobo's been cooking for about 15 minutes. Oh yeah, it's already smelling amazing. 
what I'm trying to do here is just maybe agitate all the ingredients, flip some over so that there's nothing missing out on the, the sabao party, because you know it's a party with the sabao. If you're not familiar with what sabao is, that's just this sauce. Right now it looks almost like a soup. I'm gonna leave it uncovered at this point. I'm gonna let this reduce down. I still have the vinegar over here, but I wanna reduce this a little bit uh, more. And then once that has reduced, maybe, I don't know, for the next 10, 15 minutes, I'll add the vinegar. Won't stir it because there's a superstition that you're not supposed to stir it. Because usually, no, yung mga matatanda sa atin yung mga nagsasabing papaluin bing kami yung wag mo muna nga haluin yan. I don't know if it's scientific. Let us know in the comments. That's what that guy in the video said. And I remember thinking, oh, I wonder why that is. I even asked my friend Matt. He had never heard it. And then when I watched this other guy's video, it was kind of nice to hear from him that he heard from the old timers that you're not supposed to stir it, but he would ask them why and they don't know why. I believe it. So we're not gonna stir it. Time to add the vinegar. I'm putting a little bit less vinegar than it calls for. Turning up the heat all the way to high. And as I mentioned before, I'm not gonna stir it. Adobo's been cooking for a good 15 minutes with the vinegar, so now I can stir it. I think some people say wait up to 20 minutes. I believe that's what mama said. I'm, I think it'll be fine. I'll be forgiven. What I am gonna do at this point though, is get ready to cook down the sabao. So the sabao, the soupy part that turns it almost into a sauce. It's in between a sauce and a soup. I'm going to remove those parts that easily could get overcooked, like that random piece right there. I'm grabbing them from down below. I'm just gonna be adding them to this plate. Eventually, I'll, I'll remove almost all of these pieces, including the ones with the bones. See, those ones are, they're there. They're, they're definitely done. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna remove all the meaty parts right now. Thighs can stay in. This, probably remove that. Additionally, I'm going to remove all the bay leaf too, see? Right there? because you don't want that getting lost in there. But this part, which is part of the backbone, and then this part, the back end, I'm gonna leave those in there while this is cooking up. I'm gonna try to grab all these little chunks, because my goal now is to just let the sabao cook down as much as possible without overcooking the chicken, which is done. And we'll just chill out till a little bit later. This is gonna take as long as it needs to take until the sabao is probably about half, where it gets a certain consistency. I was talking about how you see all these other chefs that aren't Filipino making adobo, and I'm sure those adobo recipes are delicious. You can tell an authentic adobo from the sabao. Some of those adobo recipes, you can tell it's too dark. You don't want it too dark. And then sometimes there's too much sabao or it's soupy. There's a consistency that I remember growing up with, um, mama making, and it had, I don't know, a texture and a consistency that was in between, like I said, a saucy consistency and a soupy consistency. And that is sabao. I don't know how to describe it. As this reduces, it's gonna get a little bit darker and then eventually it's gonna also get thicker and you won't really have to do anything else. I will check the flavor on this. I might add a little bit of sugar because I know that is common, but we'll just see maybe in the next five to seven minutes. Definitely got the adobo essence, but you need this about. Mm. But I'll tell you what, this onion, it soaks up all that flavor. I've always loved the onions in there. It's definitely getting there. See when it bubbles like that? It's hard to describe, but move your spoon through. It's really starting to thicken up now. <laughs> tiny, tiny bit of soy sauce, just a little bit. Tiny bit of sugar too. Just a little bit. Just tiniest, tiniest little bit. Yes. I think it's a little bit too much sugar. Too much sugar? I did add onions too. Maybe a little bit of soy sauce. Tell me how much. Just like a teaspoon. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna add everything back in then. Yeah. And take out that bone. See, 
that's what you're looking for between soupy and saucy hard to describe but if you've ever had adobo you know what i'm talking about oh ho, 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 ho. Take the little ones first see the girl's reaction in the vlog see how it dribbles off that's that's the way you describe it it's got a dribble 